Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Monday, October 7th, 2024 by Gaia Blooming. I'm Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I speak my peace. And we have a shifty Astro Week this week. We have a few main events, um, kind of energies. One is Venus trying Mars, which is not really a main event, but it is a nice, I don't know, a nice little balancing out, hopefully, especially being that we have the Sun in Libra. So that's Tuesday. We have Venus and Mars trining each other in water signs, which is a little interesting. We'll dig into that. Um, we also have Jupiter going retrograde this week in the sign of Gemini. That'll be Wednesday. Um, and then Friday has Pluto going direct. And this is the final countdown. This is the last little bit of Pluto and Capricorn within our lifetime. And so this is a big deal. It's a big shift. And part of Pluto finishing up in the sign of Capricorn brings a lot of crazy energies. Kind of like we've been seeing. One last thing for this week ahead is we will have Mercury finishing up in the sign of Libra and moving into Scorpio later this week uh next sunday so there's a lot going on this week even on top of that but it's a very shifty week so this is where we want to like try to stay in balance as much as possible for monday we don't have all that much going on we do have the moon moving into sagittarius it's actually about to move in as i'm recording this sunday evening um it's making the connections through the day there will be a connection with saturn a connection with the sun it's also connecting into the nodes now i love the moon in sagittarius because it can give us a overview perspective a higher perspective um it can take us out of the minutiae and too many details and have us looking okay there's a bigger plan here. It is interesting that its first connection is actually, technically it's with the nodes, but first main connection of the day is with Saturn. It's not till later in the, later in the day, later in the evening. We have a square. And so in this square, a lot of times we have mutable signs, which Sagittarius and Pisces are mutable signs. When we have them squaring, uh, it can be a little confusing because it can feel like a lot of information and we're not really sure what information to lean into, what information is correct. And what I like to do is figure out that wherever these informants, whatever these informants are, there's truth in both of them, even if it feels like they don't line up. And it's our work to listen to our higher selves. It's our work to lean into our own personal discernment in order to understand. Now what I like about both Sagittarius and Pisces is that they both do look from a higher perspective. And so whatever you're looking at, do take time today to look from the higher perspective, from higher philosophy, but also from the understanding that God, Spirit, Universe is in control and can take the nefarious, can take these really hard things that we're looking at in the world and use it for good, including hurricanes all right <laughs> so um sun and moon in connection that's actually really a uh, nice nice way to end the day um sun in libra moon in sagittarius these two celebrate each other can enhance each other uh, can enhance understanding what i love about this connection is even if you're having a conversation with somebody and there's disagreements in it these two can be like okay i can see how your point you know feels right to you and here's mine and it can be a nice little flow and I think we could use a little bit more of that in this world uh, these days. The thing that I think is interesting is the moon connecting into the nodes. Uh, so north node in Aries, south node in Libra. The nodes are about to like kind of start moving again. When we have eclipses they slow down and kind of like stop where they've been at um and so they're about to pick back up in their grand finale over the next few months of 
their particular placements. Um, Moon in Sagittarius can enhance that North Node in, in Aries, like leaning into the self, honoring the self, but it can also enhance, watch for, that South Node Libra, like, for instance, going back to the conversation where we have differences and it's okay. You don't have to agree with somebody, but sometimes that south node in Libra is like, I should agree with them, you know, just to not cause waves. Watch for that. Watch where you forget yourself. Watch where you need to, like, honor who you are and know that, again, your voice matters, your peace matters. When I was leaning into that energy mantra like I speak my peace it really did feel like two layers about speaking peace into the world which hello let's do that and also speaking your peace and knowing who you are what you think how you think where you're at in your personal evolution it's okay there's always room for growth hopefully the moon in Sagittarius can open us all to further our growth right um but where you're at is great and when we can have these beautiful conversations uh ideally we all can shift because going back to that libra eclipse when the student is ready the teacher appears and it turns out everything's the teacher so that's definitely a sagittarius way of looking at the world hey everything's teaching me what does it have to teach me what is it time to tell me so um we will have mars and venus reaching their uh connection tuesday early morning this is watery we do have grand trine water energy all the water signs are activated currently um and venus and mars mars is in cancer venus is in uh scorpio so there could be some emotional processing that does go on with this even though this is a harmonious connection just realize could be could be some of that could be some of that energy coming up let's look at our cards for monday um let's start with divine abundance invite help this came up last week for the eclipse but invite the divine to pursue you just say i'm finally ready god spirit universe pursue me so love that i think we all could invite help with this unfolding this week holding lots of good energy for florida and the entire world and north carolina and everything so it feels like a lot right it feels like a lot and therefore moment to moment step lightly if possible um love this breakthrough energy again if we can think for... are you kidding me <laughs> if you heard that excuse joe so all right breakthrough He didn't know it was going to be so loud. That was really loud. All right. <laughs> this is what living with a boy is like. Anyway, breakthrough. Breakthrough energy. What I was going to say is with the breakthrough energy, um, <laughs> he had a breakthrough right there. Timing. With the breakthrough energy, hopefully through some higher perspective, hopefully the Sagittarius energy can help us lean into things are working out for us, things are working out for me, the universe is showing me how things are working out to me, towards a little bit of optimism, okay? So see where you can find some breakthroughs. Um, especially when it comes to the world and its personal process, right? Okay? So try to think optimistically about the world. It's really easy to get caught up in the doomsday and all of the fear, lots of fear waves going on, but it's really important to lean into the alchemy from the fear. Um, we have the rebirth card in reverse. So to me, what this is feeling like, cause this is the 10 of swords. It feels like thinking lightly. Don't try to get so deep. Don't try to get so particular. See where you can think a little bit lighter. Our final card is the miser. You know, it's interesting, like cutting off this part. <laughs> It just feels like a reminder to ground in and through these energies. Try not to hold on to anything, any particular thought, ideal, anything. 
but ground in. Take that time to ground in, to feel the earth under your feet, to feel supported in and through any and all these unfoldings. So, leaving that there for today, you can book a reading. Email me, MimiClark at gmail.com. These little individual readings, I'm keeping them going for now. It's just nice to like make a little, you know, connection when somebody just needs a little support. But my favorite is when you need a little emotional support. That's my favorite to help you move through. Um, but whatever it is, you can email me for that as well. And beyond all that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power and remember who you are for you are the solution. Namaste.